I, oh my god, better put the handbrake on. So, <laughs> there you go. So today's video is a, starts with a story. Just been to the supermarket getting some grub, and I'm walking out. A guy opens his uh, van door. Hey, Charlie, I know your videos, blah, blah, blah. I was like, hey, hello. So we get chatting. Uh, we'll call him A for, for his privacy. And um, he's like, uh, we got chatting. He's like, he goes eventually, oh, where, where about you based? And I said, oh, I'm, I'm kind of based around Manchester generally, but I'm in Swinton a lot, but I'm from Edinburgh. And he goes, yeah, I know you're from Edinburgh. I saw your Edinburgh tour, good fun video. And then he goes, I lived in Lockerbie for uh, a while. And I said, oh, sad history in Lockerbie. And he goes, oh, I was there when the plane came down. So quick rewind if you're too young or you don't know. In 1988, uh, the story goes, the Libyans, angry at America for bombing them, Gaddafi, uh, they put a suitcase bomb in a Pan Am 747 jumbo jet, and it was flying from London to New York, or something like that, and it detonated above Lockerbie, killing 300 people, another 20 people on the ground or thereabouts. Now, um, you may remember 20 years ago, they extradited um, a uh, Libyan. Uh, he had a, almost a Scottish name. I think it was called Mohammed Al Magrahi. Mohammed Al Magrahi. He's currently serving a life sentence at the um, the Hague, the International Criminal Court. Though I think he was released on compassionate grounds with cancer not too long ago. Woo! That's a big tangent. Back to the story. So, A, he goes, Charlie, I was in Lockerbie when the plane came down. I was like, what the hell? Tell me that story. And he goes, well, get this. I was I was a, a, an ecstasy smuggler. I was in Wally Range here in Manchester. And we all got arrested as a cartel. And I got bailed. And so I went on the run. And I went hiding up in Scotland. I knew someone that had a farm. And I was in the middle of nowhere on the outskirts of Lockerbie. I won't be long, Isaac. Just got to get this story out because it's a good one. And uh, he's like, so I was hiding out there, waiting for the heat to die down. This is in the 80s, obviously 88. And they said, I was so paranoid, Charlie. Honestly, any creak in the house, I was like worried. And then when a big plane fell out of the sky, there's flames everywhere. The helicopter's coming for the rescue. He thought they'd sent the SAS to go and arrest him. And he's like, Jesus, it was only a bit of ecstasy. So that's today's story. Anyway, today we're going to have a look at me trying to collect some photons. And... Uh, Enjoy the video.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the, <laughs> the screaming Isaac. This is Press, which is uh, NHS track and trace, test and trace, run by. Oh, he's he's upset because uh, I'm not giving exclusive attention to the baby. How dare I? Right, okay, cut. The railway and naturalist, a pub. 1850. Look at that. Good morning, everyone. It's the 17th of November, Tuesday. We're here outside the Presswich uh, COVID-19 testing facility. There's a man in a cabin behind me who is saying, excuse me, excuse me. I don't know if you caught that, but I think he's coming here for some fun. I can. People go in and out. You can. Oh, but I can. I can. I'm sure I can. No, no, I looked. I saw it online. You're going to phone who? I'll phone the authorities. Authorities. Data protection, pal. You can't fill people in and out. No, I'm not allowed inside the tent in there. There's a, a no photography sign on the glass thing over there. Where am I stood? Filming people walking in, pal. Please don't phone the police on me. Please, please don't do it. So as I was saying before uh, the G4S security guard came out. Yes, Isaac. So this is a, a different city council to uh, Swinton. And we're in Presswich, Longfield Car Park. There's actually a viewer submitted the comment saying, Charlie, get along to the Presswich, Longfield Car Park. A bit more dramatic, the big tents gets you out of the rain. In Swinton, where I usually film, if it's raining, hailstoning, picking stuff up off the floor to hand back to baby, they just make you stand outside. Now, the poor guy in the cabin, he doesn't know. He's been told that it's like a video secure site photo secure site. See, as you can see, he doesn't try too hard. So, the guy in the cabin assures me that even though I'm collecting photons from public land, it's very naughty. And he asked me, would you like to be filmed? I said, yeah, sure. Wish someone took an interest, but nobody does. So, these are like the big marquee tent things you'd have in a wedding. Very popular in the UK as it rains all the time. Now, what caught my eye is the side of the uh, ET phone home biological tent. It says minestrone. Now, I'm sure that's a sort of Italian food. Let's go find some more names. We've got around here. Imagine being a disease customer. Love it. UK, here in the United Kingdom, we've been ready for universal basic income for a few years now. We call it, yes Isaac, we call it universal credit. And the irony now is obviously at the uh, Job Center Plus, double plus good, Newspeak. There's no more jobs. You're not allowed in the center. And plus, I don't know why they're saying plus, it's just for double plus good. It's, uh, you know, keep the proles happy. All right, you like your nature? You like your context, you like your tinfoil hat speeches, but this is nature. See all those white trails? That is snails and slugs eating the algae off the sign. Cool, huh? You can see the little munching patterns. Look at that. Anyway, strictly private, get out. In 2014, there was a big story in uh, the medical papers and the peer-reviewed medical journals, immunocontraception. Um, there's a massive introductory speech about the world's population. We're at about 8 billion in the next few months, roaring towards 10 billion by 2050. That's only 30 years away. And this uh, big paper in its, uh, in its medicalese writing explained that uh, with certain vaccines, if you have, uh, again, this is my ignorance in science shines through, but I'll throw some letters at you, maybe it'll make sense. Some mRNA, change some code, some Lego instruction kit. You can get almost 100% sterility, as in infertility in mice, bonobos, the type of monkey, I think, and uh, other lab rats, they uh, sterilized. So that's point number one. All right, this is the view of the Pressfield, Pressfield, sorry, Presswitch. 
COVID-19 center from the back. And what's caught my eye is the trans cube. That's just messing with my tinfoil hat. Trans cube. Get out of here. Now point number two, there's some um, government tenders, uh, European website, Mama. Ted something. And uh, the word tender, like when the government puts something out to tender, is they'll have a project. It's cheaper to hire private companies. So they'll uh, see if someone will tend their garden cheaply. So the latest document I saw, uh, it's like an emergency appeal to all software development companies out there. And you'll read it, it'll be in the description box below this video. It says, uh, emergency coronavirus vaccine. We're gonna be vaccinating tens of millions of people. And we need software, AI, artificial intelligence software, to ensure that we pick up all the adverse drug reactions. Now in simple English, <laughs> what that means is the government is not happy or does not feel that the current software is adequate to uh, pick up all the uh, adverse drug reactions. So they need to develop new AI to do it. And in plain English as well, an adverse drug reaction is when your medication ends up hurting you instead of curing you or preventing disease. The, the very thing that was meant to save you ends up hurting you. That's an ADR, adverse drug reaction. Now, what I want to know is, is what kind of adverse drug reactions are the government expecting from all the, exactly, from all these rushed vaccines meant to be coming out before Christmas? Don't believe it. Don't believe it in a second. So, don't know what the hell's going on. Someone's worried. So, one and a half million pounds. So, for all the weaponized autists out there. Dung, dung. Ding dong. No more ding dongs. Oh, there's a ding dong. Oh. Come on, one more. One more. There you go. Oh, it's coming from there. Yeah. Ring my bell, baby. It's getting serious, guys. Whoa. Sterilize! Sterilize! Where's the other hazmat? Look at that! Sterilize! Action! Carry on! Because you're dressed in a hazmat! Carry on, please don't don't worry about me. Why? No one can recognize you in that outfit. Oh come on. Jesus, look at the photons. It's just photons, mate. I need to get a what? Get a life. Tell you what, you, you short arse, fuck you. Right. Okay, we're just driving south on uh, Presswich Main Road, very new road, I think it's called. And just a comment that uh, to try and get a direct piece of evidence of how simple some people are and how their brains are not equipped to handle any sophisticated abstract thoughts, what blows me away, and I have to like take a deep breath, is uh, the amount of people who don't know how to use a roundabout, who don't know who has priority at a roundabout. They often try and mask it by waving other people first, and it messes it all up, and it creates near crashes. The way I see it, like driving is not a complicated thing, but you need to get your head round a lot of different concepts and abstract ideas such as junctions, turning right, waving people out and especially roundabouts. And if a large percentage, sorry, a small percentage, not large, a small percentage, maybe less than 10%, but still a lot, 
if this small percentage of people cannot even figure out how to use a roundabout, imagine trying to explain to them big concepts like the Great Reset or vaccination or the loss of freedoms due to the coronavirus act, you'll never reach them. These are true NPCs, like real backgrounders, what uh, George Orwell called the proles. Now we're gonna go have a look at the uh, Greater Manchester Police Training School. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're here at Her Majesty's Police Training Academy. Sedgley Park. Now, as soon as I started, the big lorry arrives for the dramatic audio interference. So just to tell you what happened here, just to keep you in the loop. I turned up here at Greater Manchester Police Sedgley Park Centre. And I thought, you know, I'm, a, I'm an old man. I'm 40 years old. I'm not, I'm not young and vibrant like Marty Blackborough, who is doing some fantastic videos. The, the latest ones where he gets a big group of guys, turns up at some prison or police station and they're filming inside, outside. Marty's read up on the law. Section 33 of the Criminal Justice Act. So I didn't want any of that. So I went to their cabin over there. I went to the cabin and I said, hi guys, my name's Charlie. I'm just here to do some shots from the outside. Uh, just to pre-warn you so you don't get alarmed. They're like, no, you're private property. You're not allowed. So I said, ah, oh, piss off. And then an officer came out. Hey, Charlie, what's going on? And uh, I didn't remember him. And he's all offended that I didn't remember him, but he remembered me. Well, maybe Mr. Officer, if you had a YouTube channel, I could also remember you. So it's this level of small-minded, British, rude, little Britain, scumbag, ignorant, little man, bad attitude that pisses me off. And I cannot stand the way that you try and interact with people on a pleasant level, on a decent level, on a human level, and they're just rude. Stop and show ID. Hey, how's it going? Are you still rude? Are you still being rude? You still being rude? You horrible man. I can film. I was being polite earlier. You're just rude. Very rude. You should be ashamed of yourself. Let's do a zoom in. Ah, he's figured out. He can, oh, there he is. Rude. Rude. Now I'll tell you what's been pissing me off about uniformed police officers in this country. Is how readily they will tear into a uh, peaceful gathering of anti-lockdowners with truncheons and shields and arrests and handcuffs. Especially in London. Though it happened up here in Greater Manchester. It happened in Liverpool. It happened in Bristol, as we mentioned yesterday. Now, behind me here in these lovely big Edwardian or Georgian or even Victorian buildings with their modernist, brutalist extensions, they get young men and women and they train them to how to be fair and decent and to stand under oath, to stand under their oath of office. But then they bring in acts like the Coronavirus Act and then suddenly an 805 year standard set by the Magna Carta gets ignored and you're no longer a free man going about your normal business from A to B. Suddenly you're a potential infected person in the new act. An absolute shame on the robotic droids of the Greater Manchester Police and especially the Metropolitan Police for just following orders. Like good little Gestapo agents, you know, like, oh, there's a, there's a p few people in the park. They just stood around and like, you know, the MI5 guy goes, all right, all right, uh, man on the ground, what's going on? Oh, yeah, they're, they're stood around doing nothing. Fucking send in the heavies, arrest them all. What? What? What a joke. And then for me, the final straw that broke the camel's back, although they'll never breach the beach, the final straw was trying to do the right thing, going up to the kiosk with the two orcs, trying to be nice to them. And they're like, nah, 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 private property going, no. Here's the thing, like, 
the guy, let's see, let's get a bit closer so you can see him in the background. You can see him a bit closer in the background. So, the guy, they've got an actual police officer in there with them. I was so polite. Hello, sir. I even called him sir. I'm going to be doing it. And you should see them. You should see like his internal little five-year-old, his inner cretin, his immature inner cretin, fucking toddler. He goes, no, you can't film. You can't be here. I can, and I am here. Amazing that, isn't it? Like, no, you can't yet. Yeah. Ah, I need another coffee. Okay, he's on the radio now. He's on the radio. He's getting upset. You know what? You see these CCTV poles in city centers. And I can understand them in the police area, you know, with like a little anti, what's that, anti-insurrectionist, anti-revolutionary spikes to stop you taking out the, the camera, but it's just, it's just all a bit dramatic, isn't it? Oh, here's my noisy lorry again. Let's go back. There you go. Because they know me. I saw the uniform officers come into the cabin from there, the police written on his back. He spoke to the two orcs, the two retards, and uh, I said, no, no, let them. It's Charlie Veach. What we'll do is we'll chase every other photographer, every other videographer, every other member of the public who may be more naive or not as well read in the bloody law. But because it's like, oh, look, it's, it's puppet Charlie. He's earned his right to be free. All those other peasants in the street, no. Let's fucking bring them down. Let's tell them what to do. But Charlie, because he's tall, he's got a YouTube channel, he's well-spoken, he's not usually violent, we'll let him. It shouldn't be like this, guys. It should. Look at that, he's closing the curtains. What a twat. There's the guy that recognized me. Oh, I just missed him. Maybe we'll catch him going through the door there. <sighs> Why are you filming my car? Wait a minute. Are you guys trying to enforce uh, traffic uh, laws on me? Wrong camera. It's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Going the wrong way, then. Wrong way. Are you guys? Are you guys police officers? I don't need to. Watch with all the authority, madam. Watch with all the authority. I'm texting you, dickhead. Now you were filming me. Why did you just call me a dickhead? What company do you work for? Uh, What's the name of the company? Base Yakov High School. What's the name of the company? Unic. What's the name of the company you work for? Wait, are you SIA accredited? Yeah. All right, I'm going to pull over. We're going to have a word. Excuse me, I'm going to pull over over here. Excuse me, guys. I'm going to pull over here because you can't just call people dickheads. Are you liking the authority? What's your name? I'm, I want to speak to your boss about you. What's your name? I don't have to tell you. You don't have to tell me. Okay, you need Quinn. Okay, I'll find out. I'll find out. So you got on video. You're calling members of the public dickhead. Are you serious? I've got you on video now, mate. Doing what? What have you got me on video doing? On the wrong way on the wrong way straight. Oh, what a crime! How, how many years in jail do you think I'll get for reversing down the street incorrectly? You are such an idiot. Oh my God, you're not too bad. But your colleague is an idiot. I, I, I'm gonna go, see you later, yeah, yeah. Bye-bye. I'll figure out who you are.